Wow, we made it. Here we are, the last, last module. Congratulations, guys and girls. Uh, 16th module, pages 25 and 26. We have done it. Mission accomplished. I'm going to go ahead and cover these last two pages. Please remember this. Review, review, review. Go back over it. You need a 75 or higher to pass. Um, if you get a 74, it, you'll fail. Okay? When you pass with a 75, it's good for five years anywhere in the continental United States, meaning all 50 states, the Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. Um, even if you don't go into the industry, it's great to have this certificate. Um, you're going to be able to um, keep food safe. We don't learn this at home. I thank you for having watched all the videos. If that was you, thank you. Uh, let me know how you did, please. Pass, fail, retest, whatever it is. Uh, you definitely do want to review. Review it, review it, review it. Anyway, let's jump right in, okay? Um, thanks again for hanging out with me and your commitment to yourself. All right, so we are on page... 25, all right? Page 25 is adequate ventilation. I'm going to leave the adequate out and just go with ventilation. Whoops. Ventilation. All right. So, what does that mean? Okay. Um, in a kitchen, even your kitchen at home probably, right? But more pronounced in a commercial kitchen, you've got those ginormous hoods that are over the stove, right? So those hoods, right, so let's just draw a stove here real quick, right? And sometimes you have a combination of stove with burners or you have, um, you have um, grills, right? Like barbecue, like, oh, you know what, I should use red. Like at um, Pollo Supremo or places like that, right, where they, where they, they grill the chicken, flame broiled, or you've even got a griddle type top where the entire surface is hot, right? So there's different types of stove tops. Irrespective of which one, they may be individual or all combined, you've got these ginormous hoods that suck in all of the, um, all of the cooking, Grease, oil, everything, anything that's going on is going to be aerosolized and go up. So up here, you've got, you've got a fan, right, that is an extractor, right? So that's an extractor, meaning it's there to suck up all that stuff, right? So it's all going up. Well, what happens is, over time, there might be up here, uh, there could be a, um, a mesh, right? Either right up here, right? Or somewhere right around here. And you have it in your kitchen at home. If you haven't looked, go look under the hood and you'll see that there's like a, a stainless steel or aluminum type of mesh somewhere in there. So what happens is, as all that's getting sucked up, that, that becomes trapped with grease over time. So you'll know that this is uh, greasy and dirty because your walls and the ceilings around the kitchen are going to start to show signs that something isn't working right anymore. Okay, so when you see grease or buildup um, along the wall, that means that this filter needs to have been replaced. Um, and I say replaced because they're nearly impossible to clean. Um, the grease, you're going to end up using more chemicals than, than you can imagine to try to clean those filters out, okay? So especially in the restaurant industry, you want to go ahead and, and replace those filters and always have some backups, right? Now, um, there was a restaurant right here in town that what happened was, what happened was, what happened was that the restaurant was very many years old. So the extractor tunnel that went all the way up to the ceiling had so much buildup of grease and muck inside 
that it started to break the panel. So then grease was just drooping down all over the place. Um, and they had to tear down the walls between the restaurant and the music shop next door in order to get rid of it because then fungus and mildew and mold, everything started to grow. And, and the roach population and rat population was through the roof. But again, that restaurant was there probably, it still is, they, they renovated maybe that plaza is about 25 years old. So that restaurant's been there as long as the plaza. So anyway, adequate ventilation, that's what it's all about. Um, the next one is garbage containers. Um, that's good enough there, right? So garbage containers, we need to, they need to be, and I've got one here full of, full of bottles, but garbage containers need to be NSF, NS, NSF certified. They need to be durable, no, no cracks, no holes, no leaks, no nothing. A lid, it doesn't have to be a tight fitting lid, but definitely a lid nonetheless, so that rodents and, um, and birds or anything doesn't, I'm, and I'm talking about the ones outside, the ones inside, you're gonna end up with flies, right? I mean, even though you have an air curtain, do you remember what an air curtain is? Look up air curtain, if you don't remember. We did that last time too, right? Air curtain, look that up, because that's important to have. Um, so yeah, garbage containers, um, also, and it says it right there, bold, must not be carried across a food prep area. What does that mean? Let me see if I can, I can find it. Well, make believe this is a countertop. This is easy, right? This is a countertop. Obviously, it's not this high, but I can't bring it down because the camera, okay, maybe I can. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so here's my countertop, right? Meaning, if I'm going to throw garbage out, right? I should not take garbage and place it across the food prep area or coast over a food prep area because I run the risk of, of leaking garbage on that food prep area. So if it means employees have to walk around, then walk around. Now if somebody does um, put that garbage across a food prep area, what do you need to do? The first thing you need to do is immediately stop the, the, uh, the offending person right there and, um, and let them know, hey, that's, remember we wanna close that learning gap right now. Don't let that, that staff member go out to the garbage and finish the job. The learning needs to take place where you saw the learning gap happen because it'll help that person do a better job next time. If we leave it for later, I might get busy and forget to reprimand uh, Mr. Pooch or you know, so any number of things. So you want to catch it right there. I know it seems like work, especially when you're busy, but it's the best time to catch it. Okay, that way you can you can correct it. And then the other thing is that you would need to clean and sanitize that food uh, that food uh, prep area or food contact surface. Um, the next part is cleaning and sanitizing. And what it really is, it is about. The three main ingredients, uh, not ingredients, um, chemicals, right? So you've got, um, let me put them in an order that makes sense. They're, they're not in that order here. I'm just reordering it for you. So you have iodine. You have, uh, is that right? Yeah, chlorine. And then you've got quats, right? So quats... Um, iodine. Now, quads is a longer word, and I don't, I don't even, quaternion, something like that. It's such a long word, but that's there's that's just a little piece of the word. But anyway, iodine. So the range for iodine is going to be, and I put it there first intentionally. So the sanitizer concentration. So this is the chemical, right? This is the chemical, and then over here is the concentration. Right? So the big to-do item is this. So for the chemical iodine, you need 12 and a half to 25 parts per million. So the concentration is 12 and a half to 25 
ppm. So ppm is parts per million. Okay, then you go to chlorine. Chlorine is 50 to 99 ppm. Right? And then the last one is quats. So quats is, it doesn't have a number, it's per manufacturer. Okay? But you see why I put iodine first and chlorine? Because iodine is the smallest values, and where iodine leaves off, quads picks up. Right? So if you can commit that to memory, obviously this is kind of uh, a no-brainer. You don't need a number. It doesn't have a number. Right? But iodine is, is that range. All right? So 12 and a half to 25, and then 50 to 99. Um, and then sanitizer contact, let me see if I can squeeze that in here, because I didn't leave myself room. So let's call that, let's leave that in here. So we've got that, we've got that, and then we have contact time, right? So for iodine, your contact time is greater than or equal to 30 seconds, right? Um, where are we? Chlorine is greater than or equal to 7 seconds. And then quats is greater than or equal to 30. So you are, right now you can already see that there's a pattern with, um, with two of them, right? So iodine and quats have something in common, and that is the contact time, right? So if you look at contact time for those two, they're identical. So um, don't sweat it too much. It's good to know it. Um, if you end up doing the dishes, you'll, you'll learn it, but it is important to have this information as well. But, so this is the quick and easy overview for that ginormous table. So my recommendation to you is use this and copy it on your own a couple of times on paper rather than copying all of that. Okay, so you've only got three columns, three rows, and the identifiers on top. And that should help you if you come across the test question. Okay, should, should it be on your, on your exam, that's going to be the best way. So again, copy the one that I gave you. It's, it's short and sweet, and it'll help you on the exam, okay? Um, then, at the bottom of page 25, you have, um, you have the five-step process. I'll just go over it. Scrape, right? The sink was, so it's the three-compartment sink, right? That's your sink. And then you've got one, two, three. Remember, so this one was wash, rinse, Sanitize, right? And then if it's just the three, so this is your three compartment sink. So if you're just looking at a three compartment sink, then this would be step one, step two, step three. But we talked about this. If you're looking at it, as the five step dish washing process, right? Now we've got out here step one, right? So this is scrape. Now this becomes step two. This is step three. This is step four. You follow? Because we're looking at it as a five-step dishwashing process, if you remember that. And then out here is um, air dry, right? So you have air dry, and then that would be step five. Okay, so depending on the question I would give you, right? If I'm saying what's the third step in a three-compartment three sink, the third step of a three-compartment sink is sanitize. What is the third step of the five-step dishwashing process? Well, the third step of the five-step dishwashing process is um, rinse. 
So just be mindful of the question that you're being asked before you jump in and just answer the, uh, answer the question. Am I asking you about a five-step dishwashing process or the three-compartment sink? Right, so that you can, you can answer intelligently. All right. And here we go. Drum roll, please. Page 26. Woo, we made it. All right. Dishwashing machines, right? So we're on page 26. Whoops. Page 26. Dishwashing machine. Right? So the final rinse cycle of a dishwashing machine on the book, it says 180. Right? On the book is 180, but the new code is, is up a little bit. They bump it up by one degree, right? The new code says it is 181 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so that's, that's the final step of the dishwashing machine. It just got bumped up. Um, so that's what's called a high temperature. Let me call that. Let me fix that. Oh. Okay, so, so we're talking about high temperature dishwashing machines. And then you've got what's called a stationary rack. So let me explain to you what this is. This is not stationary rack, right? That's a machine where you put the dishes over here and it goes through the machine. Okay, some big machines will have like they're long, right? They're wide, actually. So they'll go through, like the ovens at um, Hungry Howie's. If you've ever watched, uh, seen the ovens at Hungry Howie's, they put the pizza at one end, and it comes through, and by the time it gets, it, then it just kind of drops the pizza off on the other. So these, these racks move. A stationary rack would be like your dishwasher at home. So the stationary rack, what they're saying is um, the temp. The temperature is 165. Um, 165 for stationary rack. Right? Stationary. But now, don't worry so much about this. Okay? Because what, what's really important is that I just want you to know the difference. But the one that really matters is the one right there. Alright? Now, if I'm hot water sanitizing at the sink, um, so sink water, so hot water sanitizing, sanitizing, hot water sanitizing in the third compartment sink or to sanitize uh, countertops, it's 10 degrees less than that. So hot water sanitizing is 171. Okay, that's hot water sanitizing. The old hot water sanitizing number was 170. So these two went up one degree. So again, this is, this is for your dishwasher up here, your high temperature dishwasher. And this is um, manual, right? The three compartment sink, AKA three compartment sink. Right? So those are the two differences. All right? Uh, cleaning tools and chemicals. We talked about this. Um, I'll give you the review as well. Um, chemicals that require it are going to come with what is called an MSD or MSDS. And so the folders, once upon a time, they were blue. Now they could be white. They could be yellow. So it's a binder, and it's going to have MSD or MSDS. And again, that just is short for Material Safety Data, with the one word that may or may not be included, Material Safety Data Sheet. You don't have to create the sheet. It comes with the chemical. You simply do a three-hole punch and include it with that binder. That binder usually is in the kitchen, um, like in the kitchen, okay? Um, master cleaning schedule, you're watching who's cleaning, 
Everybody has a responsibility and you got to check it off. Integrated pest management is IPM. So IPM is, is this. It's short and again go back, go to the book, it's the last page. IPM, it's right there, Integrated Pest Management System. Integrated Pest Management. Okay, so you want to do those four things that are listed on, on the book, right? So you want to deny access, meaning you don't want any cracks on the walls, you don't want to leave the doors um, ajar. You want to deny food and water, meaning um, in the restaurant business, the line, the phrase is, if there's time to lean, there's time to clean, right? So you, it's, it, you've got to stay on top of that. Cleaning, 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 cleaning. Um, deny shelter, right? So once they're in, you got to kick them out, right? So how do you kick them out? You, you, you're going to need what's called a PCO, and that is the last one, which is work with PCO, and a PCO, so that's that, PCO is Pest Control Operator, right? So... Do you want a 14-year-old spraying uh, chemicals? No. I wouldn't even want a 44-year-old spraying chemicals. So the PCO is licensed to um, spray chemicals, right? And they're going to come in when you're, you're not busy, right? When you're closed, right? They may have to come in overnight. Um, and then there's a few telltale signs of the differences between um, identifying roaches, rodents, flies, etc., right? So look at the bottom of page 26, and at the bottom of page 26, you're going to see the telltale signs of, um, so you want to you wanna look at that. Roaches, right? Um, rodents, flies, and then all of these you want to use this is why you want to use a PCO, because the PCO, or the pest control operator, like we just said, will use pesticides, right? So if we have rodents, do we get cats and snakes to control the rodent population? No, right? If we have flies, do we want to spray the restaurant for flies? No. So um, depending on where you are working, some um, health departments will allow, it's a little cylinder, it's a little tube, and you basically pull on it, and it's got an adhesive um, ribbon, so the fly, and it also attracts the flies. There's, um, there's chemicals on it that the, the flies are attracted to. They're not harmful for humans, but the flies go to feed off of it, but when they land on that ribbon, that ribbon is also coated in glue, so they get stuck on there. Now, some, some health departments don't allow those, so you gotta know what's allowed, right? And then roaches, um, man, if you see a roach in the afternoon, you have a serious roach problem, okay? Um, roaches, rodents, they're all nocturnal. Now, the thing with rodents that you also wanna be mindful of is the following, that even if the rodent is, let's say, as big as this, right? They're fluffy. But if the rodent's head fits through a little hole like that, the entire body can collapse behind it, and it'll go through a tiny space. They're like cats, right? So they don't need a lot of wiggle room to get into your establishment. Um, so, wow, that's it. In a nutshell, so go back, look at flies. Flies, by the way, um, flies carry, and it's it's also there. Shigellosis, right? Shigellosis, right? So that is part of something we had covered once upon a time back in the day. We said 
we had talked about Hess N, right? So in case, this is why you want to go back and review. So look at Hess N. The other way that I had helped you memorize it was um, send sick employees home. Man, send sick employees home now. So go back, go over it. There's been quite a bit of content. And that's it in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen. There's a, a couple of practice tests at the end of that guide. Um, I do apologize. The last practice test doesn't have the answers. Um, I, I didn't receive it when I got... Those retired exams from SurfSafe, and I simply put it together without it. But that's okay. Go through, go through pages, go through the first 26 pages, and you're gonna do phenomenal. I know you will. Again, um, love you. Be blessed. Stay safe, and and keep 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 getting better. Miss you guys. Bye.